Hello there, time for a look at my recent everyday makeup routine full of new products I've been playing with. I'll be sharing mini reviews of recent launches from the worlds of makeup, skincare, body care, hair care and lip care, plus some products that were just new to me. I'd describe the colour theme of my current makeup mood as antique autumnal rose or rusted rose maybe. You know I love dusty rose tones but I've been bringing in some deeper warmer tan shades too to make it more toasty. Winter is finally fading in Australia so I haven't broken out the spring shades just yet and this fits well with autumn arriving in the northern hemisphere too. A seasonal product roundup is on the way. I'm so happy to be teaming up with my favourite body care brand Necessaire for part of this video to talk you through some of their latest launches. I was blown away the minute I met their range in 2018, they've appeared in my content countless times since then and their body brilliance continues. I've also listed some discount codes below for several of the brands that pop up in this video. Necessaire, 1999 Beauty, Monica Blunder Beauty and Refer. After moisturiser and sunscreen, of course, every day, I've been going in with a multitasking, all over, your skin but better sort of base product. Monica Blunder is a celebrity makeup artist whose work with Gemma Chan appeared in a past celebrity makeup bag video. Monica launched her Blunder cover in October last year, an all-in-one foundation and concealer in 14 shades. Very glad to see her extend the range recently and more shades are in development. This is stunning sheared out as a very natural natural glowy skin-like base using her hybrid cream brush or you can dot it on as concealer. I know Harry Makes It Up loves this and Sam Chapman just wore it on her wedding day. I shared a recent review of Refi Beauty. You might have heard some buzz around their laminated looking brow products. Their summer skin launch in June included this cream bronzer in sand. It has a natural dewy finish. I apply it by really lightly tapping this Refer 05 brush in the compact and dusting it around my cheekbones, temples and hairline. I don't need much, it can be a bit orange if I layer it and we're also coming out of winter in Australia so I currently look like I could haunt someone's house. Time to add a bit of life and colour with cream blush. I shared a big review of Lisa Eldridge's Seamless Skin June launch, swatching a range of shades and talking through some packaging issues people faced with these enlivening blush tubes. I've been really drawn to the Tawny Rosewood Dante's Dream. It's very pigmented so I only need a tiny dot of this light airy texture. This is a softly sunburnt sort of shade on my skin so it brings the warmth I want for this look rather than a really rosy flush like the new M Cosmetics So Soft Blush Stick Venetian Rose. Stay tuned for swatches of that new formula soon. Let the brow taming begin. I've loved Charlotte Tilbury Brow Lift for the past few years, but it was recently revamped and now comes in refillable packaging. My old shade Supermodel is now dark brown. I find this angled creamy pencil best for softly shading all over and it has a spoolie to soften and spread the colour. I haven't noticed a difference in the formula, but the packaging is now the colour of the shade you choose, ever so slightly shorter and the spoolie is a bit more compact and tapered. So excited to finally meet Merit, the minimal makeup brand that made a big impression on creamy, easy product lovers in the US this year. Their Brow 1980 Volumizing Eyebrow Pomade Gel is meant to be a nod to fluffy 80s brows. It does remind me of Glossier Boy Brow to be honest. It's a pomade like boy brow so it's creamier than a watery gel. The tint isn't too intense and it has a comfortable non-crunchy feel with a nice hold. My everyday eyeshadow stick has been Sunny's Face Eye Crayon. These launched in May, 10 soft, creamy, pigmented mattes in a perfect colour gradient of toasty fall tones. Jujube is my favourite, a soft berry mauve that shears out to be more of a dusty salmon pink on me. These blend beautifully or you can swipe them along your lash line. I've also been using a bit of the warmer terracotta tan clay in the crease after seeing celebrity makeup artist Paddy Dubroff do something similar with their warm shades. Moving on to mascara. Canadian brand 1999 Beauty make the multitasking creamy pencils I love, but they added a mascara in early June. Lash Tint is a lightweight tubing formula with a delicate, dainty, super slim wand. This is the most subtle mascara I've ever used and despite usually loving a lot of volume, I love this. It's the ultimate no mascara mascara that mimics the look of freshly tinted lashes. You can pretend you were just blessed with the fluttery lashes of a newborn baby and it's a perfect bottom lash mascara too. 
When I do want more oomph, I've been testing Ilya's Fullest Volume Mascara that launched at the beginning of August. I already like their Limitless Slash Mascara, but this violin-shaped brush is much more intense. Dark black, bold volume. So intense, in fact, I get better results by scraping a lot of product off if I use it during the day, but at night, go nuts. It doesn't feel heavy and I haven't seen any fallout. I'll link a demo by Ash Walker below with a dramatic before and after. Finishing with a burst of rosy brown. Dior's famous lip glow was reformulated earlier in the year and I find them far more smooth, balmy and comfortable now. The original was almost on the sticky side so I never found them moisturising but this is definitely an improvement. Mahogany is one of a couple of new colours I'll be swatching in future. It's called a luscious chocolate, perfect to deepen your natural lip colour with a sheer brownie berry. It leaves behind a deep pink tint when it fades, not that bright lip glow pink. Some new arrivals in the skin, body, hair and lip departments. Quite a nice completely coincidental colour theme happening here. This first section is in paid partnership with Necessaire. I'm so happy they wanted to team up again. I've talked about their entire range regularly. They've been in my yearly favourites since the brand began, but there are a couple of new bits to talk through. Necessaire's beloved body serum was refreshed in mid-July with new packaging and a new and improved formula. Same fantastic, fast-absorbing gel texture, just more hyaluronic acid. It now has five molecular weights of hyaluronic acid for multi-level hydration. This is the best fast hit of hydration. It's perfect before getting dressed because it sinks in straight away for a silky, ice skating smooth finish with no stickiness. It's fragrance free and the new bottle and cap are made from 100% recyclable plant-based bioresin. The body oil Necessaire's latest creation for limbs launched in late June. This fragrance-free, cold-pressed, nutrient-rich organic oil is a more luxurious treat. It contains five botanical oils, sweet almond, tamanu, hazelnut, macadamia and marula, rich in antioxidants, vitamins and omegas 6, 7 and 9. I'm pretty picky because I don't like that greasy, slippery sensation waiting for body oils to sink in, but this one absorbs so quickly as you massage your skin. It has the most light, thin texture I've tried, but it's so nourishing and makes your legs, arms, anywhere feel so smooth. You could mix it into the body lotion or hand cream. I've been using it as a cuticle oil to nourish the skin around my nails and even adding drops to a bath for soft skin after a soak. If you're interested in trying Necessaire for the first time or stocking up on your favourites, you can save 10% on their website using the code MATILDA10. I'd love to hear which bottles or tubes take your fancy. A quick lip favourite before skin and hair. You've seen Lano Lips tubes on my channel, but these Lano sticks are great on the go. The original citrusy Lano stick has been the pre-makeup balm in my bathroom for most of the year, but this is its new summery sister, Coconutter. It's as delicious as it sounds, great coconut flavour and lanolin and coconut oil to soften and nourish lips. This twist up stick has a neater, lighter texture than their thick ointments, but almost as much oomph and a great cushiony conditioned feel. When Violette FR launched her brand a few months ago, some of the most positive comments under my review were about her Boom Boom Milk. I initially skipped this all over cream spray but added it to my order with her new Bizu Balms, video coming soon. This all-in-one toner, moisturiser, serum has quite an intense spray. It surprised me the first time, definitely not a light mist. I like to massage this milky liquid on the face to help it sink in. It feels moisturising without being heavy, so it's been a nice hydrating serum substitute sometimes. No fragrance, but it does have quite a strong smell. Maybe it's the fermented birch sap in the formula? Not sure. I love face oil and I love Olvirum bath oil, that magical botanical blend and scent I've raved about, so I was so excited to see the brand branch out beyond the body for the first time with this Pure Radiance facial oil. This is a sensational skincare debut. I've been using this formula with botanical oils and bakuchiol every night for the past two months and I've had such great glowy results. It performs just as well as other luxury face oils I use for half the price in some cases, but the biggest difference I've noticed is how soft my face feels. Extremely soft and silky every morning and the scent is like a softer version of the bath oil with geranium, lavender and bergamot oils.
A hair favourite I've been enjoying this year just had a very recent refresh. On the 1st of September, French hair care brand Christophe Robin entered a new era. New packaging, new design, new font, but his famous formulas are the same. This used to be called the Detangling Gelée, but it's been repackaged and is now known as the Purifying Conditioner Gelée. Just a slight change to help people identify it with the purifying range it's always been part of. This lightweight jelly conditioner is sort of like the hair version of a refreshing gel cream rather than a heavy moisturiser. It detangles easily, smooths hair for a sleek finish, smells fresh and salty with sea minerals, and soothes a dry, itchy scalp. As a nail polish lover, YouTuber Kathleen Light's brand Light's Lacquer has always been on my radar. They're cruelty-free, seven-free, and they ship to the UK and Australia as well as the US and Canada. This group is right in my deep rosy colour mood, which we call a rose is a very new one from mid-August, described as a warm pink mauve from her truly madly deeply trio, lovely for fall. Mia is the shade I'm wearing, a bestseller described as a rich mauve with dusty rose undertones, but I think this is a delicious bite of chocolate brownie. Aliana is another bestseller, a deep, cool-toned chocolate from her fantastic Your Nails But Better collection, because everyone's shade of nude is different and it shouldn't just be beige. I hope you enjoyed this look at my latest everyday makeup routine with a rusted rose theme. Let me know if you've made any exciting discoveries in the new launch division lately. I'd love to hear your thoughts on these products, if you've had your eye on anything, if you've already tried some of them, or if you're just sticking to your tried and true makeup bag at the moment. A big thank you to Necessaire for working with me again. Don't forget that 10% off treat using Matilda 10 if you'll be treating your body. Thanks for watching, see you next time!